things done before this week be got away from us. My wife said to tell everyone hello, and she misses being here. But and then again, uh, good friend of many of you holiness people, brother Bill Addis. I talked with him uh, over the weekend. He said, "You be sure to tell those people up there that I said hello." Also, so Brother Addis sends his regards to you. He's a, he's a great man, and we appreciate Brother Addis. He's done a great work uh, over the years. Uh, it's good to see Brother Kirk Phillips come in. He's a good friend of ours. We appreciate him from Georgia. And uh, I told him, I says, we... Uh, we left out this morning at 3 o'clock, been on the road a good bit. Brother Greg's got plenty of sleep, but me and Brother Powers hadn't got, hadn't got any. Brother Greg is, I mean, he, he, he's probably wound up ready to go. So I told Brother Kirk, I said, get ready. I might hand it to you out a while. So, but he might be tired and beat out like we are too. But nevertheless, we're going to do our very best. All right. We've been looking forward. Uh, to this meeting, we've enjoyed it every time that we have been here, and we just trust the Lord to bless and to help us again this year. I assure you that God wants to help us, and God will help us. That's God's will. It sure is. Uh, I thought about the way the service was going and what I feel that's on my heart, uh, you might have wished you'd have just run and shouted right on here after a while, but we'll we'll see. All right, okay. So, don't you turn with me tonight to the book of Luke, Luke's Gospel? Uh, I'll try to use wisdom here and, and and preach to us. Luke chapter eighteen. I want to begin reading with verse nine. It says, "And he spake this parable." unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Then he goes into the the parable. He says, Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Don't you notice what he said? He says, I fast twice in the week. I give tithe of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, Be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said, I tell you, this man went down. And went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Thank you for reading, standing for the reading of God's Word. You can be seated. I desire your prayers. Mm. I want to bring your attention to verse 11, where the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Notice, he said, God. God, I thank thee that I am not 
as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. He says, I fast twice in the week. I give tithe of all that I possess. There was one thing he said right, and that was God. 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 If God would help me tonight, and if you would pray for me, I want to preach on the unseen battle. The unseen battle. The unseen battle. You and I, we can't really see everything that's going on in everybody's heart and in everybody's lives. I'm not questioning why God dealt with me about this message right here tonight on the very opening night of this convention, but God knows. God knows. If you and I could open up the hearts of individuals and look into people's lives, we would be amazed at what people might be battling with that is unseen to my and your eyes. Amen? I mean, here he was. I mean, he was recognizing God. He said, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I thought about, you know, uh, I, I know where I'm at here tonight. I'm at a holiness convention. I know where I'm at. I might be tired and a little bit weary, but I'm aware of where I'm at. Come on, help me right here for a little while. You see, we as holiness people, we have got the standard down pat. Y'all with me? We've got the standard down pat. It's not the standard that I feel that's given us uh, problems as much anymore. Come on, help me right here for a little while. Help me right here. But you see, there's other things to holiness than a standard. There's other things to holiness. As I begin to look into this, as I feel like the Lord began to deal with me about this, I feel like that the unseen battle that was going on right here with this Pharisee, I want to tell you, it was pride that he had in his heart. Come on. And I know, I know y'all are saying, well, Brother Lynn, that's not a good thing to start a convention off with. Well, I want to tell you, we, we can take it up with God because God's dealt with me about this right here. All right? Come on, help me right here. You see, this Pharisee right here, he was a proudful man. Come on. I want to tell you something. Pride will keep you away from the blessings of God. Help me preach. Help me preach. You see, I thought about uh, all of us right here this night could define these two uh, attributes in our words. Uh, But what am I concerned about tonight in this service is what is God's attitude toward pride? What does God think about pride? What is God's attitude toward pride and humility? How does the living God respond to pride and to humility? I want to tell you, let, let, me, let, let me take my time right here tonight and, and just read us some scriptures I've got jotted down here. In, in the book of Psalms 138 in verse 6, it says something there about pride. It said, though the Lord be high. 
Yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. In Proverbs 6 and 16, he said, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. In verse 17, he starts off with the very first thing he lists is a proud look. And then he goes on and begins to list the other things that, that God was an abomination to God. And then in Proverbs 8 and 13, he said, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. He says, Pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward, the perverse mouth. He said, do I hate. In Proverbs 16 and 5, he said, everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. In Proverbs 16 and 18, it says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And then he gets over into the New Testament in James 4 and 6. It says, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. In 1 Peter 5 and 5, he says, in like manner, you younger submit yourselves unto the elder. He said, yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. That's what some of the scriptures, I'm not going to read them all, but that is some of the scriptures that God has got to say about proud, being pride, prideful, come on, and, and, and pride that is about. Come on, can you say amen? But then again, let's look at the other side of the coin, what God has got to say about humility. The, the famous the scripture that we use a lot of time in Second Chronicles 7 and 14, you could quote it. He said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their way, wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Come on. Then he said, says in Isaiah 57 and 15, he said, For thus saith the high and the lofty one who inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. He says, I dwell in the high and the holy place with him also who is of a contrite and a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. In Matthew 18 and 4, he said, Whosoever but therefore shall humble himself as this little child. The same is the greatest in the kingdom of God. And then he goes in James 4 and 6. He said, God giveth grace to the humble. And then in 1 Peter 5 and 5, it says, God gives grace to the humble. Come on. I'd like to talk to us right here tonight uh, from this right here. If God would help me and if you would pray for me right here tonight about the unseen battle that is a going on. Could they be something that somebody is a battling with right here the night that we might not know what is a going on, but God has got his eye upon it, my friend. You might hide it from me. You might hide it from the pastor. You might hide it from others, but there is one thing about it. It is not hid from God. Come on. Can you say amen? Help me right here for a little while. You know what I thought about the characteristics of pride and humility. How do we uh, ourselves, how do we really define pride? I want to tell you what we thought about pride and we think about pride. It we we sometimes feel like that it's when a person is stuck on themselves or they might be haughty or they might brag a lot and talk a lot about. I want to tell you something. Pride, it goes a lot farther and pride is much deeper than and that. Come on. There is one thing about pride, and that is pride. It will, come on, it will not, it re- refuses to admit that it has got a need. Come on. Come on. Help me right here for a little while. I want to tell you something. I'd love to see God come down right here in this convention. I'd love to see the Holy 
Ghost to come by in these services right here and to help his people. But how many times have we exited the doors? How many times have we left the presence of God knowing all the time that God was wanting to help us and knowing all the time that God was wanting to do something for us? We watch God help others, my friend. But did you know what kept us from getting help? It wasn't the pastor, my friend. Come on. It wasn't the preacher, the evangelist. Come on. It wasn't somebody else. It was to the fact that pride rose up and we was not willing to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and receive that help that God has really got for his children. Come on. You know what? I've been a praying for this convention right here that God would come by. I wish you would just look beyond Brother Lee and Head tonight and these other great men of God that is around here in this assembly right here the night and just look to God. If we could get beyond what somebody else was a thinking and how somebody else felt, wouldn't it be great for somebody to receive a healing and to see miracles to be performed and somebody to be saved and somebody to be sanctified and somebody filled with the Holy Ghost? But what is it that keeps us from receiving those things? It is a simple little word called pride, my friend, and we've got to get beyond that pride. But Kurt, you want to come take it? <laughs> All right. Y'all, y'all help me preach. So there's one thing about pride. Pride refuses to admit. Come on. It needs help. Come on, help me right here for a little while. I've heard other preachers say it. I've even said it in my preaching from time to time. One of the greatest pearl among holiness people is to the fact we don't want to admit that we need help. Come on, help me preach right here for a little while. Oh, God of heaven. I want to tell you what is not so much what the Pharisee said. It was good that he did not commit the sins of extortion, the sin of adultery, that he was not unjust. Come on. It was good that he fasted twice a week. He was a faithful tithe father. Come on. It was not what he said, but it was what he did not say. Come on. Can you say amen? Help me right here for a little while. Come on. Help me, old Lamb of God. I feel the good spirit of the Lord right here. Come on. I'm grateful and thankful to hear what Brother Roadcap said about the service. Every Sunday night. And Brother Houston had already informed me about the shouting and everything that was going on. I want to tell you, I am grateful and I am thankful for that. Come on. But my question to you is, did you get in? Come on. Did you shout? Did you run? Did you rejoice? Did you get a blessing? Did you get help that you needed from God? And what was it that kept you back? It wasn't that God was just wanting to pour it out on a few, my friend. But there's a lot of people that are set on the sideline and they'll let pride keep him from getting I'm not going to get in there like that I'm not going to run I'm not going to shout I'm not going to rejoice I'm not going to get my hair messed up I just had my suit pressed come on I'm not going to get a wrinkling I would to God we'd get beyond pride right here in this condition and lose ourselves in the spirit and the power of the sweet holy ghost oh help me preach I've had people that come up to me and tell me they ain't no way. I'd get up there and preach like you preach and sweat. That's just a Georgia Southern term. I guess y'all know what that is. <laughs> there ain't no way I'm going to get up there and preach and sweat and get red face like you do. Come on. When you get willing to where God wants you to be, you'll be willing to do it. Well, I hope I can help you, Brother O'Cap. I hope I can help you. Come on, I'm talking about the unseen battle. Come on, when God is a wanting to help us, when God is a wanting to bless, and when God is a wanting to move, you know what we are blaming on sometimes? Sometimes we'll excuse ourselves on them riders, brothers. Arthritis. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about? Come on, your elbow probably don't hurt a bit worse than what mine's hurting right now. But I'm up here trying to preach and to do my very best for God. 
Come on, I'm not going to claim one of them riotous brothers to keep me from feeling the anointing of God and the Spirit of God right here tonight. Come on, help me right here for Lord. You say, well, Brother Lee, let's wait till Friday morning and just have an old genuine Holy Ghost breakthrough. Why can't we can't do it on Tuesday night? Is God just God on Friday morning or is he God on Tuesday night? Come on, help me right here for a little while. You know what I feel like God will have to do right here tonight? He will have to shower down his blessings upon us right here tonight. Come on, help me right here for a little while. Lamb of God, uh, Brother Greg was uh, talking about coming up the road about playing in different things. I want to tell you something. I don't know one key from another. Come on, it, you got to be way out for Brother Lee and Head to detect it. I don't know one one thing about music, come on, but there's one thing I don't want to happen to me is that I'll get so prideful that I'm not going to raise my hand. I'm not going to glorify God. Come on, come on, I'm not going to magnify the Lord. Come on, come on, I'm not going to invite the sweet Holy Ghost to come into our presence and to come into our midst. Come on, can you say amen? Help me right here for a little while. You might have said this. There's a bunch of nonsense for those little children to take off and run like they run around this church right here on a day so I'd rather see them being running in the house of God than the devil have them out there uh, trying to lure them and to pull them into some hokey talk somewhere. Come on, at an early age, my friend. Come on. I tell you, there's a battle that is going on that God is the one to take care of that unseen battle. Oh, I wish I could do better. I wish I could do better. But pride, pride refuses. To admit that there is a need. Come on. Sometimes we want everybody to just think everything's are going fine. Come on, help me, help me preach right here. Help me preach. Oh, Lamb of God. But you know, I thought about, you notice what he said. He said, God. He said, I thank thee. That I am not as other men are, extortionists, unjust, adulterers, or even as this, as this publican. Come on, help me right here. You know, not only, not only does pride refuse to admit that there is a need, but also thought about pride is more concerned, come on, with what other men think than what God thinks. Woo, wish my wife was here. I'd say, pray, Arlene, pray. Come on, because I feel like I need it right now. Come on. We are more concerned about what other people think than about what God thinks. Come on, help me, help me preach right here for a little bit. That's what pride, pride is more concerned about that. I want to tell you what, when the Pharisee walked in the temple, no doubt he knew, he knew that there would be a crowd of people there. He walked in, he stood up and thought to himself, no doubt he said, they are listening, they are looking, and he said, God, I thank you. Come on, that I am not as other men are. And then he went on to describe his goodness. You know what he was doing? He was more concerned about what other people thought than about what God really knew already about him. Come on, can you say amen? Help me right here. I know I'm a dealer with a touchy subject right here. Tonight. I know I really am. Come on, but I tell you what, I need your help and I need your prayers right here tonight. I really do. I really do. Come on. But here it was, this, this publican right here, this Pharisee rather, he was not able to meet his own needs. Come on. He was not able to help his own self, but he was a calling on the one that was able to help him. But but he was not willing for God to help him. Come on, can you say amen? Help me right here for a little while. I want to tell you something. I've even saw that right in the house of God where people would stand up and they were called, oh God, but for God to work and to do something through them, they weren't willing to be totally obedient unto God. For come on, what if God were to speak to you right here tonight for you just to get up and to stand up and to raise your hand and he would bless you. Would you be willing to do it? But so come on, help me right here. I'd be 
you're willing to tell some of you. You say, I feel way out of place. I feel like a total oddball. You wouldn't do it if God told you to do it. But did you know what keeps us glued to our seat? It is just a little old simple word called pride, my friend. I feel like there are some of you right here. You have come to this convention. Come on in. There's a battle that is going on. Other people might not know what it is. Your husband, wife might not know totally what's going on. Your children might not know everything that's going on. But there is a God in heaven that knows all things. But wouldn't it be something right here at this convention for the Holy Ghost that come that sweet lamb of God? I'm a feeling the anointing of God right here tonight. I feel like he's the one to help somebody in your battle and in your situations. Come on. Come on. Come on, oh God of heaven. I feel the Lord here. I feel the Holy Ghost here. I really do. I know we're not running, we're not shouting. I'm not necessarily a pushing for that. But I tell you what I am a pushing for, and that is for you to get help. Come on, help me right here. Help me, help me, help me right here. Come on. So he was concerned about what others thought rather than what God thought. I feel like this is what the Scripture is talking about in the book of John, chapter 5 and verse 44. How can you believe which receive honor one of another? Come on, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. Come on. What is Jesus really saying there in that passage of Scripture? I feel like what Jesus was really, really saying was, as long as you are more concerned about what people think than what God thinks, Come on. There could be a touch of pride. Come on. There could be a touch of pride. Oh, God. Pray, 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 church, pray. But pride refuses to admit it cannot meet its own needs. Not only does pride have a problem admitting that it has a need, but it won't admit that it can't meet its own needs. At, at the very heart of pride is a feeling of self-sufficiency. Right at the very heart of pride, there is, there is that feeling of self-sufficiency. I'm able to work it out my own self. I'm able to do it through my own strength. I'm able to take care of it through my own might. Come on, help me right here. But could I say right here the night there are some needs right here among us. I feel that you are not able to take care of it in your own strength. You are not able to take care of it in your own might. You cannot take care of it in your own ways. Come on. It makes us feel like that we are all sufficient. Come on. Can you say amen? It makes me think of about the man over there in the book of Luke. I believe it is chapter 12 that went out and he looked at his fields. Come on. His fields was barren and going to bring forth plentiful. He said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull down my barns and I'm going to be a greater barns. Come on. You notice what he was just saying. It was I and my. I'm able to take care of. You know what? He was looking at the all sufficiency of everything that it looked like that what he had done. But he forgot about God was the one that sent the rain. It was God the one that had the sun to burn down on it. It was God the one that was in the control of it. It was just all about himself. Come on. Can you say amen? And that is what pride will do. You know what? He was going to show off that big old fine fancy barn that he was going to build, my friend. Come on. But did you know something? There was an 
unseen battle that was uh, going on in that farmer right there, my friend. Come on, even though his grass bought for plentiful, he probably felt like he was uh, doing good. He probably felt like he was uh, living right. But there was an unseen battle right there. I feel like right here tonight, my friend, that God is uh, dealing with some things. Come on, church, help me right here for a while. That he would love to help you on, my friend. That we are not willing and able to take care of it ourselves. But there is a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that we are able to think, come on, even the ice on a thing, my friend, but it's going to be according to the power that works within us. Pride. Pride. Come on. Come on. The Pharisee, the Pharisee, not the publican, but the Pharisee, he did not one time admit that he could meet his own needs. He thought he was meeting every need that he had his own self, the publican. Notice what he said. He said, I fast twice a week. I give tithe of all that I possess five times. Five times alone in these passages of Scripture that I read to you right here tonight, he uses that letter I. I. I thank thee. Come on. I give tithe. All that I possess. Five different times that he uses this, that letter I. I, I, I want to tell you, my friend, we had better be careful. We had better be careful. Because, Brother Willis, within ourselves, we cannot do it. We're not able to do it. But we've got a God that is able to do it. Come on, help me right here for just a little while. I thought about it as the Lord began to deal with me about this. Here it was with this this Pharisee that was right there beside of that publican. No doubt he heard everything that that publican said. Do you know he had the same opportunity as the publican had? Come on, can you say amen? Help me right here. But I thought about it, and then you know, and I began to pray about it. God began to deal with me about this and about this convention right here and about this meeting right here. There's going to be people here in our midst that they have got needs. Come on, can you say amen? And did you know what? What causes them to exit that door right back there and to go out of this sanctuary right here just like they come into the house is to the fact of that unseen battle that is a going on within them. Come on, and they don't want to just admit that they really need help to God. That is what causes them to exit the building. It is not because Brother Rocap hadn't preached good. It is not that he hadn't reached for you. It is not that the Spirit of the Lord hadn't dealt with you. It is not that the singers didn't sing good. But we would like to say something and excuse ourselves about other things. Come on. But there is an unseen battle that is a going on. Come on. I believe right here tonight that God is the one to take care of our needs right here tonight. And as you know how there was a time among us as homeless people, we didn't even have to worry about giving an altar call. The Holy Ghost would move and the fire would fall and it would bring people down to an altar. They didn't have no pride about themselves. I'm not saying that y'all are stuck on yourself. Don't take me wrong. I hope I'm a preaching this right and a preacher in the right spirit, my friend. But did you know the reason is sinners? I'm talking about sinners. Come on, that needs God more than anything that will dart the doors of the church house and leave and walk out and leave God alone. I want to tell you something. It is to the fact that pride is eating at them and are dealing with them, my friend. And they're going to have to be overcome by that, by humbling themselves under the mighty hand of God. Sweet Lamb of God, I'm a feeling the glory of the Lord right here tonight in this house. <laughs> let me let me talk to us. I'm gonna be finding a place to close here. Don't don't worry. 
He said, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers. But then notice what he says. Or even as this publican. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, pride will cause us to justify ourselves. in our ways, in our actions by others. That's what he was saying. That was really what he was saying. I thank God that I am not as this publican. No doubt he felt like he was probably be better. A whole lot better. Oh, y'all getting real quiet on me. But it's not scaring me. That's the good thing about it. When we begin to justify ourselves, and we begin to compare ourselves among ourselves, Oh, come on here now. Come on. But could there be someone right here tonight that is under the sound of my voice here tonight that that's what you're trying to do is to justify yourselves by somebody else or you're trying to compare yourselves by somebody else? If you're going to compare yourself with somebody, I want to tell you what, compare it with Jesus Christ. Look into the Word of God. Come on, can you say amen? Help me right here for just a little bit. But Brother Brent Markey, I feel like there's somebody right here tonight. If you would just humble yourself down. Come on, help me right here for just a little bit. There is no telling what God would do for you right here in this house. But not only that, my fear, when we begin to humble ourselves down, there is no telling what the Holy Ghost would begin to do for others right here. Come on, I want to tell you something. I feel like there's more than just one need right here the night that God is a wanting to help. Come on. You know what keeps us from getting those needs met? It's to the fact, my friend. Come on, help me right here. It is not that we all say it is not that God's storehouse is empty. It is not that God is on a vacation. It is not that God is not concerned because he still says to cast all of your cares upon him for he cared for you, my friend. But we, come on, we are afraid and we are fearful sometimes to bring our needs to God. But what would happen right here tonight if somebody just rose right up right from where you are at and you just step right out and you just come right down that aisle and you say, lay that hand on me and get that anointing oil out and to pray for me. I've got a need right here tonight that I wanted God to help. But did you know sometimes we'll let things rise up within us and it'll keep us back and we'll exit that door and we'll look for that exit sign and go right outside that door and we'll leave with that same old burden. We'll leave with that same old trouble. We'll leave with that same old care. Oh, sweet Lamb of God, pray church if you've ever prayed because I'm a feeling the Shekinah glory of God right here tonight in this house. I'm talking about, come on, the unseen battle, my friend, that the Holy Ghost is the one to deal with and to help you to be an overcomer right here tonight in this house. Come on, church. What was it? I'm just preaching to you off the cuff right here now. What was it that caused a young rich ruler after Jesus told him what did he needed to do? Come on, he said, by the commandments, he said, these have I kept from my youth up. 
Come on, and then Jesus said, one thing thou likest. Jesus looked at him. He loved him and said, one thing thou likest, my friend. And then the Bible says he went away from their sorrowful. You know what was going on in him? There was an unseen battle that was going on there that Jesus knew about, my friend. And there are some right here tonight that the Holy Ghost knows about and is wanting to help you to be an overcomer. Y'all want to pray, pray. If y'all want to sing, sing. The unseen battle. That Pharisee said, God, I thank thee. Really what he was saying, that I am not like that publican. But Jesus said that publican went down to his house more justified because he was humble. Beat upon his, smote upon his breast, his, never opened his mouth. But God saw the heart and God saw the need. There's some needs right here tonight that God is wanting to help. Come on, come on, pray. Say. To your ways, I'll say yes. I will trust you, I'll obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my old heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes. Trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart, I'll agree, and my answer will be yes or Trust you, I'll 